And seeing as how the film is already all ass, it's gonna wind up really, really smelly. Does anybody else think that John fucking hates choppers by the end of the film? I honestly would not have gotten on that last chopper there at the very end. Because think about it, he's crashed twice. How the fuck did he survive either of those, by the way? Especially the first one. And where the fuck did that fucking Terminator come from? Out of nowhere? What exactly killed all the men and left no trace? What the fuck is up with the goddamn USB bullshit for... Bullshit for jacking a ride from one of those Moto Terminators. MCG comes from directing music videos. With everything he's put out thus far, he's accomplished little more than showing his utter inability to make us care even the slightest bit about any character he puts on the screen. Now that's not terribly surprising with the two Charlie's Angels films, because they are shit. Look at the scripts. However, this one actually had potential. Marcus is such an interesting concept. So much so that apparently originally John Connor was barely in it and then Christian Bale really wanted to play John Connor more than he wanted to play Marcus and they rewrote it and it shows. Wait, what about Kate Brewster, you know, the really unnecessary character that T3 introduced to the franchise? Was she played by Bryce Dallas Howard? I mean, Bryce Dallas Howard was almost in this movie, wasn't she? And she was pregnant, I think, which adds pathos? I don't know. As I understand, it was on the set of this movie that Christian Bale got pissed off and yelled at, I think it was the cinematographer. I'm not particularly bothered by that. I tend to separate the person's work from the person's personality. I do hear, however, that it was during a very intense scene where he was really acting and I would like to know which one it was because I can't think of a single fucking tense or exciting or engaging scene in this whole pile of shit. And seriously, as interesting a character as Marcus was, he really had way too little impact. Sam Worthington is a pretty good candidate for, you know, the next big action star, but honestly, I get the feeling that he can act too, and I'd really like to see it. Can somebody please get him a good script and not hire a director with three consonants for a name? The Terminators are no longer fucking scary. Ooh, they're dangerous, unless of course you reenact the ending of a Home Alone movie on them. Or how about the Arnie Terminator at the end of the movie? You know, naked, because that's how he first appeared in the first three. and. Arnie's face because it's Arnie and it's partially his franchise. You know, Arnold Schwarzenegger himself said that he refused to do a cameo because it would cheat the audience. Other than trying to remind us of the first fucking movie, what is the point of it? And there is, you know, that cardinal rule of never reference a better movie in the middle of your shitty movie. So how dangerous is he? Well, he goes over to John Connor and he throws him away. Then he goes over to him again, and he throws him away. What the fuck? The T-800 of the first two movies knew what he was fucking doing. Also, they set a big fucking trap at Skynet Central, and they leave one fucking Terminator. Fuck that. One. Why? Do, no, do they not have automated guns? Something? It's Skynet fucking Central. Why was it so easy to break into? They fucking... They practically play fucking catch with the Terminators in this movie. How about the big Transformer one? Completely useless. Just there for it to be big and loud. Or how about how the flying one just made no fucking sound until we saw it. Also, I hear that originally the concept for the ending was something along the lines of John Connor dying and Marcus being the new one. You know, a Terminator leading the resistance. That's pretty fucking interesting. Know why it got cut? Apparently, some assholes just couldn't fucking wait until the movie came out, so they leaked the fucking information onto the internet. If anybody has an idea of who these people are, locate them, and they gotta be punished more than Mostov with the three fingers. I know, force them to watch McG movies. So, we get an entire movie set during the future war. And it's shit.
Did anybody else see that coming? Come on, people. Less is more. The less we see of it, the more our imagination will fill in the gaps, and we'll think of something really impressive that no movie could ever beat. You know, like religion. I mean, the trouble with religion starts once people are forced to believe what someone invented to fill in the gaps that science at the time couldn't fill. Anyway, where's the dark tone? Could you give us a smidgen of atmosphere? It's barely even gritty, and all fucking action movies today are. It's like they fucking bleached all the flashback scenes from the first one. This is not the future my mother warned me about. Or maybe it is, because some things the same and some things different. I don't know, the scriptwriters have no fucking clue what they're doing. Seriously, how are we supposed to know if this is the same time as the one Kyle Reese came from? How are we supposed to care if it is? And oh right, of course, it's fucking Marcus that teaches Kyle Reese the thing with the strap for the shotgun. Fuck you, McGee. Or whoever the fuck came up with that. Marcus being a robot would have been a good twist, you know, if it hadn't been all over the fucking trailers. How the fuck can he swim? Are you fucking kidding me with him reaching into the back of his head, pulling the fucking chip or whatever the fuck out? Anton Yelchin is not Kyle Reese. This future apparently being different allows the fanboys to rationalize away all the fucking problems. If you ask me, a real fan sticks to the original and isn't blind to the faults it has, is willing to criticize. Otherwise, it's just fucking obsession. And rationalizing how every single entry into the franchise fits doesn't necessarily make you a good fan. If it doesn't fit, it doesn't fit. A good fan, however, remembers what it was like when it was good. Otherwise, how exactly are you any fucking different from the 13-year-olds that scream best movie fucking ever? about, you know, half the fucking movies they watch. How about the fact that they use weapons that we have today? Come on, show me some future technology. Don't you have ray guns? Isn't it astonishing how little we fucking care upon seeing all the human slaves? Remember your reaction to seeing the fields, Neo, endless fields, of humans when Neo wakes up in the fucking pod? That was impressive. Here, it's just... nothing. I personally have the feeling that McGee could suck all the excitement out of The references to the first two movies are just plain silly. The action is big and should be really cool, but it isn't. The film isn't engaging at all. The first two movies played around with what can really happen and what can't, but the fucking heart surgery in the middle of the desert seemingly sans equipment just how fucking much are you expecting us to swallow? Stan Winston, rest in peace, man. You did awesome work. And you will not be forgotten. A fucking PG-13, are you shitting me? A Terminator movie without an R rating. I mean, what next? A Predator movie? An alien? Fuck! Well, that's it for the movies, so... Don't know how many have actually played this, but... This came out in 2003, Terminator 3, War of the Machines, as it's supposed to rise. Maybe you haven't even heard of it. Maybe there's a good reason. There is a good reason. You probably know of the Battlefield series. Imagine that, set in the Terminator universe, only shit. Seriously, I don't know if this was rushed, or if the people had no idea what the fuck they were doing, but it's pretty shit. When characters are shot, they just fall over. Also, for some fucking reason, they're using guns that we have today to destroy fucking Terminators. And yes, I realize that maybe they're using, like, different ammo in the future. But the problem is, they're using those same guns in the present day scenarios. And they behave in the exact... Okay, at least the sniper is, you know, a 50 cal. Still, wouldn't it have made more sense to, you know, go the... Jedi Knight 2 Jedi Outcast route and go with, you know, a laser energy sniper? The two sides are completely unevenly matched. Terminators are really fucking slow and sure they're powerful and take a lot of punishment before they go down, but still, they're somehow too easy to dis neither side is all that much fun to play as. It is worth mentioning that the FKs 
are pretty fun to fly as.